if you are expecting god to do something and you doubt in your heart trust me it's not going to come praise the lord welcome back on faith in faith today we want to have a deeper lesson on faith as we started the other time now we have come to realize that we need to place our faith in Christ. But, you no, know, I said in our earlier discussions that we have come to a point in this generation where uh, a lot of circumstances are creating fear, are creating faithlessness in people. So, in as much as that is not enough to believe in Christ, today we want to look at some of the things that hinders us in our faith walk with God. We want to see things that will hinder our faith level in Christ. So today, I have the same person on the show, Pastor Elijah Nkoma from the Assemblies of God Ghana Revival Restoration Center. Pastor Elijah Nkoma, welcome once again. Thank you very much, my brother and friend, Pastor Michael. It's been wonderful having Hello. you. Yes, yeah. thank today, you so much. Today, as we started the last time, today yeah. we want to look at um, hindrances to faith. And I would like to commence with what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. He says, For verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So that means that there are things that can hinder our faith, or things that can hinder us from having what we want to have, or having laid hold on the promises of God. So today, Pastor, uh, let's dive into the lesson, hindrances to faith. Okay. Now, when we talk about hindrances to faith, now, hindrances has to do with um, a problem or a situation that does not make you get to where you have to get to. Okay. Now, when we talk about hindrances to faith, in your scripture, you mm. mentioned one. The first thing is doubt. Okay. The first thing is doubt. Sure. If you are expecting God to do something and you doubt in your heart, trust me, it's not going to come. Because the book of James chapter 1 verse 6 says, But let him ask in faith, in faith. with no doubting. Mm. For the one who doubts is like a wave of sea mm. that is driven and tossed by the wind. Hallelujah. So you see, doubt is the first hindrance. Mm. And you see, in our context as, as, as human beings, mm -hmm. Even as Africans, yeah. chasing it down, down, down <laughs> to Ghana, it's very, it's very easy to doubt someone. Mm. It's very easy. But when it comes to putting your faith to work, mm -hmm. it's not about doubt. Okay. You don't have to, doubt is the first hindrance. Mm. Doubt. If you doubt the power of God, mm. it means you, are not, you will not be able to experience, mm -hmm. have this experiential knowledge mm. about who God is. Sure. Because first of all, you, you have this kind of doubt in your head that this thing i don't think is going to work that's the work. first hindrance mm. now another hindrance to faith has to do with self sufficiency okay you think you know it all you know it all you have it all but you see the bible says apart from me you can do nothing mm. sure. you see we 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 have gotten to a stage in life that we think that because of that which we possess mm -hmm. that which we have mm -hmm. we think okay it's okay it's okay. That's how come the rich will tell you that it's the poor that serve God. It's the poor. <laughs> I mean, how can you say that? Because you think you have everything. everything. But trust me, if you lay your head down and you say you are sleeping and you don't get up the following morning, hmm. what are you going to do? Hmm. Now, the question is, did you believe in Jesus? Mm -hmm. Did you have faith in Jesus? Or you had faith in the things that you you possessed okay. so self-sufficiency is another hindrance to okay. faith you think you own it all but trust me mm -hmm. you own nothing yeah so man of god just as you said see um i always say this when i go out to evangelize to people that uh, when you go to sleep and you don't wake up no one can go and question god that's right. god why didn't Brother A or B, Akwesi or Akosia, they didn't wake up as he or she slept. So it, it's very important. Now, on what you just said about possession, then it, it, it just something just occurred to my 
mind, to my thinking, that then um, it looks like our, the knowledge and technological advancements in our days is trying to be a hindrance or placing some level of limitation on our trust or our confidence in God. You see, the Bible says, for our sufficiency cometh from God. Okay. You see, when we talk about our sufficiency cometh from God, you acknowledge the fact that that which you possess cometh from God. Mm. Now, I may possess this tablet. I may possess a phone. But you see, when I don't recognize the fact that it is God that gave it to me, so I have to use it for his glory. That is where we end up thinking that, okay, I'm the, I'm the boss. Hmm. I own this, so Charlie, whatever I have, I can, I can do anything hmm. at all with it. But trust me, if God wants to wipe out your wealth or riches, it will not take him a year. It will take mm. him just some microseconds. Oh, we, we, we've seen that a lot. Countless yes. times. Microseconds. We, we see a lot of people yeah. who are so-called, they are on top, they are stars of the world. And we, I would not like to dive into other issues. But out there we hear. Yeah. Well, people amass wealth so much such that in just a day or, like you said, just a second, they, those things are just ruined out. Yes. Because they don't recognize the fact that it came from God. They think that by virtue of their skill, their virtue of, by, by virtue of their knowledge, they are by, by virtue of what they have learned, they have acquired it. Okay. But trust me, the Bible says the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Mm. So yeah. where do you get these things from? From God. Mm. Well, some people may use other means, other dubious means. But trust me, those other means have limitations. Hallelujah. But the sufficiency of God knows no limitation. Knows no limitation. That's so right. viewers out there, we want you to come to this point that irrespective of who you are and what you have, you need to place your faith in God such that those things will not be hindrances to your faith in God. That's right. Now, man of God, the next thing that I would like us to look with regards to hindrances to faith is the fact that lack of action, lack of action, lack because of action. Uh, we, we see a lot of people, we tell people, believe in God, trust in God, and people tend to, I remember, let, let me just share this, way back in secondary school, I had friends, I had a friend who said he was going to um, make, it, make his grades without studying. So he was professing, I mean, oh, he was more like, oh, I, I believe in God. Anything can happen. There is, I have faith, okay? But I never, for one, saw this brother studying his books. And the long and short of the, what I'm telling you is that, in fact, he, he failed mercilessly in his <laughs> exam. He, 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 he didn't do well at all. So let's look at faith, when we profess faith and our actions. Now let me commence with this scripture, which sure. says that uh, James chapter 2 verse 20 says, the Bible says that for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. So works here has to do with your actions. Yeah, what do you sure. do after believing or having faith, receiving a word from God? Faith, if I, when you were asking, when you were asking the question, there's the same scripture that came mm -hmm. to mind. Faith without works mm -hmm. is absolutely dead. Mm. It's absolutely dead. Now, when we look at faith and action, now, when you put your faith to work, you get result. Sure. When you pray to God, you get result. Mm. Because there's an action. There's a move. Now, when you drop a seed on the altar, you believe that God is going to look down from heaven mm -hmm. and act. Okay. That is your form of action. Okay. Faith without works is dead. is dead. Now, when you have a mental picture, as we were talking about last week, you have a mental picture mm -hmm. of that which you want to happen. You make steps towards it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at any building, first, there are some actions that took place before the building came into existence. Okay. First, you got the land, mm -hmm. you lay the foundation, mm -hmm. you, you started building, you got to the roof, sure. and you saw that this is the picture I had in mind. Okay. And now it has come to pass. Okay. You took a bold step. Mm. Now the action was the, the stage, the various stages, stages, processes that you went through. Faith without works is dead. Mm. You have to put something to receive something. Okay. 
Yes. Just like how you go to the kitchen and you want to cook. Okay. You put you put some ingredients together. Okay. Now, if those ingredients are not put together, you will not get a result. Mm -hmm. So once those ingredients are put together, there's mixing, there's stirring, everything comes together. There you see the result mm -hmm. of the soup or the stew you are looking for. Sure. Now, you see, in this same instance, when somebody is, is learning in school, so God, God will help mm. me. God will help me. But my, my brothers, my sisters, if you don't learn, mm. the Holy Spirit will never remind you. We always pray, oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Bring help into me. remembrance. Yeah. <laughs> what I have studied, <laughs> but trust me, if you haven't studied, mm. uh, you 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 go down the. In fact, you chill, Porto. Uh, that is it. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. So if you go out hey, to your kitchen <laughs> and you have your ingredients, don't just assume <laughs> that uh, by miracle those things are going to happen. Someone once said that God will not do by miracle what uh, you need to do by that's responsibility. Right. That's right. So it means that. In our work with God, in as much as we put our confidence and trust in Him, we need to put our, we, we need to act. We need to act on what we have come to believe in and what His promises tell us. And um, to bring this session to an end, man of God, I have realized that when it comes to believing and trusting God for His promises, it looks like all His promises come with conditions. Because even when it comes to salvation, um, a lecturer, my lecturer once said that salvation is free, but the means is not free. So it means that when it comes to receiving the promises of God, there are conditions attached. You, God says, okay, if you will be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So it means that there is a condition. If you will be willing and obedient. So if you pick out that willingness from there and you disobey, it means that you are not going to receive. So in as much as that we believe in God for his promises and what he has said concerning our lives, then it brings to mind or brings to bear that we need to act on what he has asked us to do. That's Man right. of God, what will be your final um, words or what you have to say finally on our hindrances to faith or our work with God as we conclude? Okay. Now, when we, the one, one of the things that I'll say when it comes to hindrances to faith is that Brothers and sisters, let's not doubt God. Mm, let's not doubt let's God. Let's not doubt God. God, people always say God has stopped working miracles. Mm. God has stopped working signs He's and wonders. He's still in the business. But my brother, my sister, God is still in the business. Hallelujah. Put him to the test. Mm. And you see the result. I have, I have something to, 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 to share with you okay. about this, this result of, 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 of faith. Yeah. You see... If we put God to the test, I always tell believers, it is not a man of God. Mm -hmm. It is not Pastor Elijah, mm -hmm. it's not Pastor Michael. The name of God is at stake. Uh. And God will not allow his name to be dragged in the mud. Mm. Because his name stands out. His name is above every other name. Yes. So he will make sure that that which you have said, in his name, in his name, shall come to pass. Okay, that is it. Sure. There's a friend of mine who, who was scared of going to the labor ward. Mm -hmm. Called me, told me, "Oh, Pastor Elijah, I'm scared. Doctors are saying CS." And I said, "My brother, my sister." Mm -hmm. I, I told him, "My sister, God has a word for you. Mm -hmm. Do not doubt Him." The Lord is with you. The Lord is with. Have you. faith in uh. Him. The Lord is with you. To my surprise, mm. recently she texted me, Pastor Elijah, the Lord has done it. Uh, no CS, hallelujah. the baby came out. Bah. Hallelujah. You see, God is still working. God is still Let's working. Let's not limit the power of God just to material things. Okay. Just to money, riches. No, 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 no. It goes beyond that mm. because our God is a consuming fire. Oh, hallelujah. So, people of God, I want you to understand from our lesson today as we've discussed that when it comes to hindrances to faith uh, doubts play in fact uh, someone once said that uh, fear or doubt is the very opposite of faith so when we doubt we have no place for faith 
And when we rely on our sufficiency, then it becomes a hindrance to our faith. And so we also need to put our faith to work or actions. We need to apply actions to our, our faith work with God. Right. Um, so uh, I would invite Pastor Elijah uh, for the last time for us to discuss about how to get results from faith, right. how to get results. And uh, that will be our last um, session with Pastor Elijah probably next week for us to see um, how we can put our faith to work and get the right results. So God bless you viewers out there. But um, I won't leave you if you are watching us and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I would like to give you this opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life because you don't know what is going to happen in the next moment, in the next minute. If you are here, you are right watching us right there and you want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I have heard your word and I have repented of my sins. I want you to come into my life and make me a brand new person. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you come into my heart and be the Lord and Master of my life. God bless you. If you just said this prayer, Jesus just came into your heart. But I would admonish you that you get a Bible-believing church to attend where the Spirit of God is in motion and not just any other church. And I'll come your way another time on Faith in Faith. Bye.